The Huntress is one of the most beloved characters in all of Dead by Daylight. Being released on the 27th of July 2017 as part of the second and last free DLC chapter in the game's history, A Lullaby for the Dark, this killer was revolutionary not only because she was DVD's first ever ranged killer, but also because she pioneered the concept of lullabies. Now, throughout the years, the Huntress has received relatively few changes. However, one of her most significant differences when she first came out was that her lullaby was actually directional, meaning that players could perfectly determine the killer's position only by listening to the Huntress's humming. Additionally, when she was first released to the live servers of the game, her hatchets for some reason made a tremendously loud explosion sound on impact with a survivor. Take a listen. Yes, I kid you not, this sound has not been edited in the video. And you can clearly see the player's reaction to the literal jump scare of the hatchet's impact. But why was there even an explosion sound effect in the first place? How did all of this actually happen? Well, we'll have to look a little deeper into DVD's history. First of all, we know that the developers were really wanting to make a ranged killer right from the get-go, as in the official Dead by Daylight art book, there is clearly a picture of a hatchet, which very closely resembles the one of the Huntress. Furthermore, this killer power icon had existed in the game files from pretty early on, however this doesn't really answer our initial question at all. But what if I told you that there is a very old video showcasing an early prototype of the Huntress power, which holds the answer to this exact question? Well, what is currently on screen is exactly that. As you can see, this is the Hillbilly who's holding a hatchet in its left hand, probably because the Huntress's 3D model hadn't been completed yet. The killer charges the hatchet using the same animation for lunge attacking, and the cooldown between throws is basically non-existent, most likely due to the fact that it just hadn't been programmed at this stage of development. What I'm guessing is that this explosion was simply used as a placeholder during the Huntress's creation process, and the developers accidentally forgot to remove the bomb sound effect when releasing the killer to the live servers. Also, something which I personally find really interesting is that you can see the full collision hitboxes of the actual hatchets in-game. Overall, this video is in my opinion a fascinating behind-the-scenes look of how the DVD developers prototype killers before their release. Moving on, we've got a very strange case of Dead by Daylight's matchmaking system completely messing up and accidentally producing one of the most hilarious moments in the game's entire history. This is a clip of Bulgarian streamer No Things playing the game during its beta testing stages, and as you can see, the match has a total of 8 survivors and 9 generators that have to be completed. However, unfortunately, there is only one killer, so it's not like this is the 2v8 game mode that we were all dreaming of. Funnily enough, outside of the amount of players, this match was completely normal and the actual game was holding up quite well, there weren't any kinds of bugs or anything else of that nature. And also, it is unclear what exactly caused this bug to occur in the first place, as in the pre-game lobby everything looked completely normal. Unsurprisingly though, No Things was only able to get one kill at the end of the match since it was a 1v8 after all, and the survivors somehow managed to do all of the 9 generators in less than 5 minutes. Now, since the game seems to have been handling this unintended bug pretty well during its beta, I can imagine that perhaps the 2v8 game mode is not that hard to implement as we might think it is. Alright now, let's move on to the next section of the video. This is a clip of a Dead by Daylight match taken on the 14th of September 2018, and obviously this is the backwaters from Realm, but which map exactly? As you can see, there are two jungle gyms which doesn't fit the description of neither the Grim Pantry nor the Pale Rose as both of them feature only one May style. Well, strangely enough, this is actually the Grim Pantry. See, unlike now when this map features the signature pier, or sometimes called the Dock, back when this map was first released it simply had two May styles at the place where the pier can be currently located. Furthermore, the original version of the Grim Pantry was also quite a bit bigger and only lasted for about a year and one month before it was made significantly smaller and reworked to feature the dock instead of the two May styles. Fun fact, the Grim Pantry also didn't feature the iconic Crow Bomb until the 2.5.0 update during early 2019. But this is actually not the only backwater swamp map that has been reworked in the past, as the Pale Rose has also had quite the history regarding that. 
The very original version of the Pale Rose was released on the 8th of December 2016 and had a total size of 284 square tiles. Needless to say, the map was absolutely humongous. For comparison, the biggest maps in the game right now are Shelter Woods and Azeroth's Resting Place, and those ones are only 176 square tiles. The original Pale Rose had not one but two docks, and one of them was literally almost kissing the main building as you can see. In addition, there were a lot more open spaces between the different tiles. For instance, the shrimp boat was situated on the corner of the map and surrounded by a huge dead zone. During an unknown patch, the map size was reduced to 215 square tiles. However, this still wasn't enough and the map was reworked yet again in the 2.3.0 update to have a total size of a little over 160 square tiles. One of the docks was removed and the Pale Rose received significant layout changes. Since then, the map has remained relatively unchanged, with it only receiving minor tweaks here and there, which were mostly comprised of lighting changes and bug fixes. Alright now, you know how today when you break a pallet in DVD, there is a cool animation of the broken pieces being burned, supposedly by the entity, after which a few wooden planks are left on the ground. Well, back in the early days of the game, when the killer broke a pallet the broken planks would literally fly all over the place, and sometimes, survivors could, no joke, determine the killer's exact position from the complete opposite side of the map, simply by taking a look at the wooden parts flying into the air. But did you know that during Dead by Daylight's early prototypes, this was even more exaggerated? As you can see, the pallet quite literally explodes when the killer breaks it, and the reaction of the developers themselves says it all. To be honest, I've been trying to find out which version actually introduced the current burning animation for the wooden planks after a pallet is destroyed, however I have been unsuccessful in doing so. If any one of you has a clue, make sure to share your thoughts down in the comments, as I would love to know. Well, yeah, I guess that was it. This was part 6 of the strangest facts from DVD's history. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you learned something new from it. If you did, then make sure to let me know by leaving a like down below, and also I would be glad if you considered subscribing as well, since we're literally so close to hitting 6k subs. I wanna thank you all for making the evolution of the shack become my first ever video to hit 100,000 views. This is a big milestone for me and I really appreciate your guys' support. But yeah, anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!